Okay, yeah. no, so my departure point uh, is is this. I'll, I'll tell a one, one Chanda story. I'm driving with Chanda. This was maybe like last year. And uh, on the drive, we get to a studio where he was recording. It's not an incriminating story. I'm like, yeah. man's looking worried. <laughs> no, so we no. get to the studio and then uh, he comes out and says, there's an opportunity where the guys inside have, have spoken about how they want uh, a Zambian artist from you know Zambia to do some international thing. I don't know if it was a collaboration or to appear on a, on a compilation or whatever it was, but big opportunity. My mind's telling me that, hey, congrats, man. His mind's telling him like, that's a perfect opportunity for your maps. Oh. I'm like, what? The rest of the afternoon we drove, he's like busy on the phone trying to find people so that he can connect to your maps and his management about this opportunity. So that's one in terms of my Chanda selfless story. It's not the Chanda show, but I've got one more. <laughs> so then we come to the studio. Eventually we record his verse for a song uh, of mine that he features on. And then finish recording, send the files off. We're in the booth, or we're in the control room rather. And then he says, I've got this uh, Spotify playlist, which is called New Wave, where I just like have upcoming Zambian acts who people don't know of. He starts playing the tracks, he's dancing, he's so into it. And this is like, so so he doesn't even know about it. But in my mind, I'm thinking like, this, this is one guy who's just all about, you know, progress. Even if it's not specifically going to benefit him, it's progress in general. Mm. And I've had the same vibe as well with, uh, so the last letter, <laughs> for the many times that I've interacted with him, you're listening to a song and then I'm like, but this song has holes here and there. But he usually sees the positive side because his philosophy is that if a person has taken the first step mm -hmm. uh, to pursue their artistry, then that's what you should start uh, looking at in terms of analyzing that thing. Mm -hmm. And I know he hates it when I start trying to <laughs> pass sentences as well. I'm trying to understand him, you know. So now we're here. We, I mean, we've got uh, Henry who's working day in and day out in the industry. We've got Chanda with the attitude that I've just displayed. Zubs with like a, a legacy uh, in terms of the industry in South Africa, in terms of the industry on the continent, in one space, you know. And so my point of departure, I suppose, is just to, after understanding that, obviously each of you has had a journey and you've seen some gaps where, where you might be frustrated and you think, but if we did this, then that would be unlocked. If we did this, then that would unlock. And... Um, You've been doing these rants. Should we call them rants? <laughs> <laughs> you can call them that. It's okay. <laughs> hey, yo, what's up? It's your boy, Chanda Mbao. And as you guys know, I like to come online every once in a while and say a few things about my thoughts on Zambian music or the music industry. And so today I wanted to pick up a you know, debate or a recurring debate that I always see online. And it's the big question of why isn't Zambian music more successful? What, what's the thing that, that bugs you the most when you look at where we are as an industry? Maybe let's start there. Me? Yeah. All right. <laughs> well, I guess, I guess, uh, you know, one thing that I, as, as somebody who's been in the industry, you know, in, in, in my own capacity in Zambia, you know, I, I, you're often on the receiving end of a lot of criticism about Zambian music. Oh, you Zambian artists, this, oh, why don't you Zambian artists do this, that X, Y, Z, right? It's always, it's a lot of complaints. Right. Yeah. And one thing that I always like challenge people, I, I say, you know, a lot of times the problems or the challenges that you witness in the music industry are actually not uh, unique to music. These are actually kind of systemic issues that we're dealing with as a people or as a, you know, as a country, obviously I'm from Zambia, so I, I can speak mostly about the Zambian context. Um, but yeah, but I would say like, so my major frustration, if we have to go kind of super macro is I don't think we're particularly strong or, or we don't spend a lot of time, um, in, I guess, designing systems. We're not, we're not big systems thinkers. So, you know, so I, I often get frustrated because I feel like we're too comfortable with one-off success, right? Where this one guy goes off over here and does something great. This one girl goes off over here, does something great. I'm like, but that's not enough. We need to institutionalize this so that the next set of people can come in and tap into that like set of opportunities. But, but I don't know if it's because of, you know, I, I get really philosophical and start theorizing about why we are the way we are. I don't know if it's because we come from very kind of a very sparsely populated country where I think our mindset is not very, um, is not very geared towards thinking about how to bring people together necessarily. Oh, diverse. Yeah. yeah. I, I think we're more like, Oh, it's okay. My little village over here, the next village is, 500 kilometers that way. Mm -hmm. I'm sure there's some people doing something mm -hmm. over there. I'm sure, it's cool, but <laughs> my village is over here. You know what I mean? I think we kind of have that thing. Whereas if you look at 
for me in my view anyway other like successful i guess geographies at least music wise and and, and otherwise there's this idea of network building mm -hmm. right i i always remember there was this uh interview once where uh, david o was getting you know david o does a lot of press in the u.s obviously a well-known nigerian artist and I, he said something which really stuck with me because uh i think it must have been one of one of these big platforms that in the US and they asked him like, oh, so I think they asked him like, who else is, is a good Nigerian artist that we should like look into or something like that. He's like, you know, he's like, it's funny that you asked me that because you guys here in the States, you obviously know about me, Wiz, and I can't remember who else he might have mentioned, but he's like, but yeah, but he's like, but I promise you right now, there's a hundred Nigerian artists <laughs> who are standing right behind us, ready to go with the fan base, with the push, with the organization, with everything. There's a hundred, you know? And I was like, man, this, this guy gets it, right? This is the idea of like that density, that network effect, that like, you know? So I think if I had to pick one major macro frustration, that's probably it. Mm. Mm. I think that's a great one to pick. Mm. You know, it's funny because I, I watched that rant that you, you're talking about, where well, you're talking about systems. There's something about outside of Africa, yeah. especially in the music space. Mm. When you see how they respect musicians yeah. and the artistry that they create and you see the support the supporting structures that they have mm. right those are monolithic structures that have been around some of them for centuries yeah. you know and i know for example we have major record labels in this country right mm. i mean you would know mm. and they pump a lot of resources time effort think of the, that type of an institution that type of muscle yeah. times 50 per major city yeah. Mm. Where this institution owns land, yeah. they have access to resources. They were set up by one guy in like 1920 or 80, and it's been carrying on since. Mm. They employ a thousand people the world over. They have exchange programs with African artists, South American artists that they fund to come. These are institutions that are in place to not only respect the fact that artists do what they do, mm. but what it takes for them to create. Mm. So therefore you have a very broad scope of who the artists are, what kind of music they do, etc. Mm -hmm. Then you come to Africa where, you know, I play a little guitar, you know? <laughs> My dad was in a band in the 70s, you know what I mean? I decided to rap in high school, you know? The only options you have are, can I get on, ra on radio, mm -hmm. you know? Maybe there's one of these underground labels that are becoming popular and known. I could sign to them maybe. Mm -hmm. Maybe Sony or Universal or Gallo mm -hmm. or somebody might see me and pick me up and run with me. Mm -hmm. Other than that, who you wanna see? The British Council? Mm -hmm. With the Institute? Mm -hmm. I mean, what are, are the institutions that are built yeah. for art? Maybe the government, right? With, with the National Arts Councils and the you know government funded. But other than that, there are no institutions built by artists that have stood the test of time that create their own systems and infrastructures mm. that nurture and support artists from the mm. ground level up. Mm. So then what you find, you find one or two artists that manage to break radio, yeah. mm. get signed by a major, mm. have a hit record, maybe do a feature with a US artist or something. Mm. And then you have like your music industry build around this guy. The media only focus on this guy mm. and everyone else is just an afterthought. You know what I mean? Mm. At the concerts, they're only here to see that guy. And everyone else is an afterthought, you know? Mm. As for making money and a career out of it, forget about it. You're not going to be able to live. So I, I resonate a lot with what Chandler is saying about systems because mm. systems are broad thinking mm. and they're deep-seated. You know, mm. they come from yeah. a deep, deep place. I don't think we have too much of that on the continent. Mm. I was going to say, uh, before I come to you, like, the, I watched an interview a long time ago, uh, Manu Dubango, the late Manu Dubango, was being interviewed and... Now I understand where he was coming from, I, I suppose, because his hook from uh, Soul Makosa, that's where uh, Michael Jackson, Mama say, Mama say, Mama Kusa, and uh, yeah. later on Rihanna, please don't stop, okay. you know. So mm, yes. those guys, you know, publicized those, but uh, the root was Manu Dubango. And he was saying something like, in Africa, when we make music, mm. we're making it for celebratory reasons, you know, mm. babies born, we're there, you know. Mm. We're, not, we're not doing it for with commerce as, as our see, intent yeah. initially. Mm. And, and so now understanding, like, you know, obviously if you look at those guys, I'm, I'm sure MJ and, and Rihanna's people made more money than Manu Dubanga <laughs> started, yeah. right? But, but <laughs> on the same point of systems, um, Zabs and I, we went to um, Cleo's launch um, 
for album, which was uh, um, uh, um, um, the new school album. New school album, yeah. yes, yeah. yes. And and we we rocked up at the Universal office. We did that you whole know, Def Jam. Uh, you guys rolled out the red carpet for us. It's <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but but just in there, it was like wow, this is like yeah. some hectic infrastructure for a guy like me who's been independent, you know, yeah. in my yeah. little music uh, experimentation, yeah. whatever. Yeah. To get into a place where there's just like structure all over the place, yeah. yes. titles, yes. you yeah. know, goodie bags when you leave. <laughs> <laughs> and all the music. Oh, that goodie bag was great. <laughs> put us all on so yeah. using the USB stick no, absolutely but, but yeah. that being the case you know it's it's important what what what's what's been said here maybe you you could probably have like some different insight as to what these systems are you know because like sometimes we can broaden it and say mm. systems and whatnot mm-hmm. the guys listening or watching from from Zambia or whatever he's never you know understood that he's mm. he's recorded at a studio in wherever material mm. or whatever uh, taking his song to radio, it's been accepted. He's getting airplay. He's doing a show, but maybe he doesn't understand, you know, what what's what these things. Being said exactly, are. and I think that's where awareness comes in because uh, I think um, uh, from a Z context or Zambian context is there is not enough education around the business of music. Mm. You know, it's only about the music business. There's a mm. difference. So there's a music. Uh, the business of music and the music business. Mm-hmm. So the business of music is what we're talking about now, the institution, mm-hmm. you know, having all the right elements in place, having all the right resources in place. You know, uh, as an artist, you need to focus on making music. You got to be in the studio. You, you got to be, you know, doing your craft. You know what I mean? Let other people manage all the nitty gritty and, uh, you know, the running arounds. And that's what we come in as labels and uh, or majors where we take that off your shoulder and, you know, obviously in make it a proper system, like a business, yeah. and give you that kind of support. Yeah. And I agree with you. I mean, obviously, uh, you know, unity is very key. Uh, we've seen that in Nigeria, like you, was, you gave an example of, you know, Davido talking about, uh, you know, you know, you know, hundreds of artists that are in Nigeria that, you know, we don't even know about. Mm-hmm. We know now there's Asha K, who's bigger in numbers now. He's yeah. putting more numbers than yeah. Wizkid yeah. and Davido, probably even combined at the moment. Yeah. You know what I mean? So I think, uh, yeah, I think there's got to be systems in place. And, uh, you know, these big institutions and the majors have tools in place. So they've got systems, they've got staff, they've got people that work on your PR, they've got people that work on your style, they've got people that work on your, you know, uh, articulation. Mm-hmm. There's people that work on, you know, your sound, obviously from an A&R perspective, mm-hmm. you need that kind of backing. Mm-hmm. Yes, it comes with uh, certain burdens and obviously commitments that you have to make, mm-hmm. but you gotta weigh the options and just think, I mean, that's why you've got big artists like a Drake still signed to Universal Music, why? Mm-hmm. Mm. You got Kanye West's good uh, good music label signed to Universal. Why? Mm. Or Sony has big artists as well globally. Or Columbia has got Beyonce. Mm. Why? Why can't she do it herself? It's because the systems in place that these organizations put in place, where there's tools, there's uh, analysis, there's analysts, there's a whole lot of uh, you know uh, verticals that you gotta navigate within the music industry that artists don't understand. So I think, yeah, I just think, you know, it's a no brainer for me. I think, uh, yes, you know, it's always good to break out and, uh, you know, do your own thing as an artist, but you need the backing because the backing gives you the support. The the backing gives you the marketing, it gives you the exposure, it puts you on uh, Times Square, (laughs) your board, for instance, you know what I'm saying? So I think it's just about, about, just understand what you want to do. I guess it's, it's, the point is, uh, you know, uh, figure it out. Mm. If you don't have a solid team, you need to find a solid team. Mm. Otherwise, you're not going to yeah. explode. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Awareness is key. So uh, back to my point, awareness, and you need awareness, and awareness comes with a price. It mm. comes with a team. It comes with logistics. It comes with, uh, you know, a lot of, you know, um, uh, verticals and stuff, resources that, you know, obviously is, as a normal artist, as a single artist, especially an indie, that you normally wouldn't afford. Mm. Uh, but label, there's still room for indie artists. Um, I was watching an interview with L.A. Reid. Yeah. And he was uh, talking about the more, more or less similar conversation that we're having here. We were probably articulating it better than him. Bam, like, <laughs> <laughs> I like sacrilege. But what, what he was saying is like, what, uh, what a label does is if you've got a vision and your vision is huge, it's very difficult to accomplish that vision on your on by yourself. Yes, uh, we dig deep in pockets. I mean, like us guys have been independent, but like 
sometimes you you have an idea for a song mm-hmm. and then you're like flip that video is going to cost me this much mm-hmm. you know you all, all these costs you know line up being like ah you know, I'd rather put that money in in a plot, and, you know, yeah, yeah, build build, just, uh, build a yeah, house, you know, or something like that. So what he was saying <laughs> in a nutshell is that sometimes what what the label does is it helps you pursue that huge vision if you've got it. I think the example that he was using was Little Nas X, mm-hmm. and and he was saying the the artistic vision that he had uh, was so huge that for an independent to accomplish it mm-hmm. was going to be very difficult. So I think that's where it comes in. But you've been you've you've worked on both sides, label and you've done indie indie uh, stuff. Um I have, you know, but I think the common the common thing it's, I mean, we've already talked about it. Like mm. once you have different teams in place mm. and each of them kind of do their thing, then it's easy to have the one guy have a face at the end of it of all those teams put together. I mean, Chanda said it really well when you talked about ecosystems in particular, yeah, right? Mm. Where Fine, there's the artist, right? So the mm. artist has to write the dope joints. Mm. The producer makes the dope beats, get into a dope studio, you create a nice song, right? Mm. But then the label comes in, but they bring like a whole other team who are great at other things. Mm. And even within that team, there's other people who are good at other things. Yeah. And then you're going to put your music on a platform, a digital music platform, for example, with other people who are good at other things. So what you want at the end of the day is you want the artist, whoever the artist is, this is Chandambao, the artist. You want them to be a representation of the excellence of not just the artist, but every other system yeah. that's in place yeah, yeah, yeah. supporting the artist. Yeah. Yeah. So when you look at where we are now, continentally, right across the continent, we celebrate the artist, right? Mm. We'll celebrate the face, the person at the the hero, mm. you know, who'll be like, ah, oh, Sampa is amazing. Mm. But what about all the other tiny other ecosystem kind of little worlds where all those people are amazing too? Yeah. I mean, by the time we get to a Wakanda soundtrack, yeah. it's not just one person who's done that, right? Yeah. yeah. So if we can celebrate and create almost an aspirational quality to the other systems and the other people in those systems and begin to see the worth in building those, celebrating them just as much as we celebrate the artist, right? Mm. Maybe not as overtly because they're not going to be celebrities, but let them get paid. Mm. Why are you paid? Oh, I'm paid for doing the data analysis on album sales yeah. in Chanda's, you know, in Chanda's genre mm-hmm. to be able to predict which single will choose as the next one. Mm. That's what I do. And that's my career. That's become my thing. A hundred other kids in high school will be like, I want to be that guy. Exactly. Yeah. You know I want to be a stage saying? manager. Yeah. Yeah, I want to exactly. be, yeah. you know. Music. I'm the guy who, who set up the yeah. lighting when you're uh, on stage. Artist yeah. liaison, you know. And then you bring up a very valid point, uh, actually interesting point, because that's where publishing comes in. Because publishing is always overlooked. Mm. You know what I mean? You, you think of it as a pie, right? And mm. then you cut the pie in half. And then uh, the first half, you cut it in half. And then there's publishing, mm. which is the composition of yeah. the music, right? Mm-hmm. And then there's the master. Mm. Okay. And then uh, that's how we look at it. And then the other half, you, you again, slice it in half, and then you've got uh, synchronization, mm. and then you've got brand partnerships. Mm. All those are revenue generators for the artists. Mm. And that's why education is key, because that's how you unpack. So, you know, obviously publishing uh, focuses on the composition. The composition is uh, your producer, your songwriter, mm-hmm. your lyricist, uh, and whatnot. Mm. Okay. They, but to your point, they need to get recognized mm. and they need to be compensated mm. you know and we listen to tracks all the time and we think damn you know gasp has got a big track you know i hate throwing names in but i'm just giving it you <laughs> <time. laughs> with you guys yeah yeah <laughs> exactly hey casper hope you know what you know what i'm saying you think wow he's got a big banger yeah but there's like 10 people behind that Absolutely, track. Yeah. There's, yeah. There's, yeah. there's probably two songwriters. Yeah. There's yeah. probably three uh, lyricists. There's mm-hmm. probably, you know, two comp- it's, so it's, it's a team. It's a team. Yeah. Exactly. And and they need to be recognized and they need to earn their royalties as well. As yeah. much as the artist is. Absolutely. Yeah. On the composition side of the of the track. You know what I mean? And yeah. then when you come now to the masters, obviously the masters is a track which is yeah, typically owned by the artist or co-owned with the label. The label mm. yeah. yeah. And then now you come to the synchronization, mm. which is quite key. Now with synchronization, obviously there's brand opportunities. So an ad on TV, your song plays, that's synchronization. On radio, whenever a song is obviously used for visual content, mm. uh, even radio, that's obviously uh, uh, an endorsement. Mm. Uh, and then you've got brand partnerships. I mm. mean, straightforward you know you're endorsing a brand water or a whiskey or whatever it is those are nri sources of income so yeah. non-recorded income mm-hmm. you know the sources of revenue and you know i think we need to educate 
um, you know, artists, especially yeah. in Zambia, in terms of how to, you know, frame themselves in a way that they're, ap they're appealing to brands and, yeah. and they understand the, the whole ecosystem from, from one track, just mm. one track. This, an, so this, here, here's a quick question. I, yeah. love, I love that you brought mm. those up because most yeah. people don't realize that, you know, an artist can get paid for more than just like the ticket of his yeah. show, right? Mm -hmm. Like I'm, I'm paying for the show, I'm paying for the album or whatever. There's many ways an artist can get mm -hmm. paid. But then the question is, do the structures exist in Z, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. To be able to monitor <laughs> and keep track <laughs> of the fact that this artist's song was played at the stadium during halftime. Yeah, you know, yeah, before yeah. Patson Daka got signed to go overseas and he was playing locally when they were playing a song halftime, mm. was the artist getting paid for that? You know, when you walk into a store and they're playing one of, I don't know, the latest songs on, is there a way of keeping track of who's playing what where so that mm. the artist can get paid from that? Mm. I mean, what are the structures like? So, so, so I think maybe just to jump in there. So I think uh, performances are, are sort of separate, right? Because that's, those are live. We, we regard them as live performances and um, those have to be paid for. Like if you're doing a halftime activation like at a game or rugby or soccer game and you're performing, that's a live performance. You have to be paid. So you have to be booked. Same way you'd be booked to but, perform but, in a club. But are you talking about like when the song, like say for example, halftime, then you're just hearing a song in the speaker. Because that's more what I'm talking about. Rocky, that's what okay, you're talking about. That, so not a performance, but just like the music that's blasted. That's, that's synchronization. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's synchronization. So mm. that needs to be, so it's, 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 there's no systems to track that part of things. Mm -hmm. The only systems in place, I think in my opinion and in my experience uh, is for instance, a Samro. Uh, Samuel tracks radio. Obviously, mm. you probably, mm. you guys are probably aware radio plays and whatnot, and they'll give you a report, you know, mm. of how many times your track played on the radio, and mm. then they'll work out a figure, and then you get paid from that. Uh, but synchronization is a deal that's done way before you even, you know, or the track or the sound is played on an ad or in a mm. stadium. Yeah. So, if I'm understanding, so exactly what you've explained, you're asking if that is mirrored in Z. Is there systems yeah, yeah, in that? Because yes. in SA, yeah, those systems Because in SA, they exist, like you said, with Samro yes, yes. Yeah. and Capasso, or whatever, you All know. All these what guys, I mean? yeah. But in Z, so who's going to answer? Do you. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> no, you that, that, that there is no. Uh, like, for, for me, like the, you know, as uh, as Henry refers to, I think for me, the key one would just be radio spins, you know, in, in, in Western markets or here, that's like something that you have very easy access to to yeah. know how many times did my track spin on radio because that's like a very yeah, direct spins. input yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> to know your compensation from one kind of like key, um, I guess, key outlet for your product. But yeah. but we don't have that currently. Okay. Uh, like, like, that's, like, that's a huge problem. Yeah, it, it, it is. Because that's, like, the, that's, that's mm. the beginning of yeah. the whole yeah, absolutely. industry. Yeah, it is. It starts from there. We had a song called Njota um, mm. back in what, 2012. We collaborated with Zubs. Wow, so, that's 10 years. Ten, whoa, uh, that was 10 years ago. Oh, well, 13. Uh, that, was, that, that was a dope track. That was a dope track. 13, 13 years. 13 years ago. Yeah. Oh, my Lord. But in yeah. Zambia, yeah, where it played time. like <laughs> constantly. Yeah, you know what I mean? And, like, and I remember you played it for me at, at, at some point. I think we met in Lone Hill at some point. Oh, no, and then you jammed it for me. Yes, that's 10 years ago. Yeah. That song, yeah. Fire Legs on yeah. Radio, <laughs> Renumeration from Zed. Zero, <laughs> you know, because of, uh, I suppose, that system. But to, to what you said earlier on, what you guys referred to, the one video that I saw online, which was like, whoa, blew my mind in terms of teams coming together. And, and, and obviously, I'm, I'm, you know, sliding away from the systems talk. You guys can rope it back in. There's a video online where Black Coffee is on a panel somewhere overseas, and he's there with his team. I don't know if you've seen that. Mm -hmm. There's no. he, he's seated on a stool or whatever it was on the panel, and there's six other accomplished looking, rich, cologne smelling yeah, <laughs> chaps right. next to him. Gucci and, wearing, Gucci wearing, <laughs> and it just makes sense when you look at that. You're like, flip, that's black coffee's team. Yeah, that right. explains a lot of what we see because, like you were saying, we celebrate black coffee, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? And he's got a formula, he's got you know more success to him, he's doing great things, mm -hmm. but over. You know, this it's it's even when you watch that video, like, damn, yeah. there's yeah. a lot going and, on here. Yeah, yeah. And, yeah. And, and, and it's, it's, it's not a Mickey Mouse job. I mean, it's it's it's, it's a full on business. Mm. You know? I mean, it really you, is. As an as, as a creative or content creator, as an artist, you you you're running a business. You're mm. an entrepreneur. Mm. So you mm. gotta just like any other entrepreneur, you gotta have a proper team, yeah, a solid team. So now, some of what you said here, uh, did you want to jump in? or did Yeah, you, I was just going to say something yeah, yeah. quickly. Um, yeah, no, I was going to say that I, I always used to tell, you know, the, my team, I'd say like, 
you know, don't get it twisted. You know, we see Drake and we think, oh, Drake is popping or whatever, but mm -hmm. it's not Drake. There's like 30 people, you know, behind him yeah. making all these things happen. So, and I would say that, I mean, for me, the impetus was twofold. One, it's, I can't, I don't, an individual does not have the capacity to do everything. So the team, I actually need you guys. So I need you to step up kind of thing. Mm -hmm. um, but it's also that don't be just cause one person or some face happens to be the consumer facing brand. Yeah. Don't, you know, don't like, don't confuse it. Don't, don't you know, you're, you're still very necessary mm. and the brand doesn't exist without you. So you can't sit back and think, Oh, Drake's gonna, do, Drake's the one who's popping. So, so yeah. let, let yeah. him do everything. It's like, that's not how it works. You know, yeah, Drake no. is yeah. a business. Drake might as well be a PLC or a sequel because <laughs> yeah. that's yeah. what he is, right? Yeah, He's yeah, a yeah, business yeah, that yeah. employs like 30, yeah. 50. I don't yeah. even know how many people, Michael you know, Jackson said yeah. when, when Michael Jackson, before that, um, this is it concert took place. And um, he said he needed a personal doctor, you know, who eventually took took him away from us. <laughs> but mm -hmm. he was saying like, you know, this- Allegedly. Whole, yeah. <laughs> and he was saying this whole thing hinges on me. And so I'm, I'm the focal point of this thing. So you guys need to mm -hmm. kind of make sure that everything that needs to happen uh, to make me tick yeah, happens. Exactly. You know what I mean? But it's, yeah. it's, he's part, he's part of a, he's like at the top of the pyramid, yeah. but there's a, there's a Yeah, but there was exactly. 100%. Yeah. yeah. 100%. Uh, yeah. So what I was going to say before you, you, you made that point was, on one of your videos, you said something which reminded me of what you said, because you were talking about, um, I think you call them legacy songs, songs mm -hmm. that, that have, mm -hmm. that were recorded. Back catalog. Back, back catalog, catalog, yeah. Mm -hmm. They were recorded a while back yeah, and yeah, they right. still, they make, still generate you know, money. Generate, yeah. ge mm -hmm. generate money. Yeah. That's not a, a common feature in, mm -hmm. in Zambia. We had this conversation yeah. before uh, you and I, were, because some of your songs from uh, 12, 15 years ago still make you money. You still get a check. Mm. Maybe, you know, the, the check gets thinner as the years go by, but if there's a placement or whatever, maybe it expands or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, so how how does that, you know, come to to be? Because you've got a lot of, there's one song though in, in Zambia, maybe there's, there's a few. There's one song where I thought like, whoa, because you guys watch the, the series Snowfall. It's yes, on, yes, yes, the, on. the 80s one. Yes, 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 yes. With the cocaine the, guys. And with the not. cocaine guys. It's yeah, a, it's a yeah, big yeah. blockbuster I, I series in the, it, yeah. in the States. On what yeah. channel is it again? I forget. I remember, yeah. yeah, yeah, it's, yeah, yeah. It's, 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 same channel, I think, that does Fargo and all those. Okay. Yeah, yeah. But now there's a scene in there. Franklin. Franklin, yeah. Franklin is the bad guy. <laughs> Idris, uh, I forget his last name. Yeah, yeah. In, there's a, an episode in, in season two. So he's in a club. Exhibit is the manager of the club or something. And there's a song playing in there and I'm like, I know this song. Mm. So it was bugging me. Yeah. I shazammed, I couldn't get a result. Mm. After a while researching, researching, I found out that's a song by the witch band from Zambia. Crazy. Oh wow. Recorded in the 1970s. Me. It was like a that's disco track. Blowing. So at that point I'm thinking like, so the witch band Jeez, did a cover. Bro. Cause in my mind, I couldn't comprehend that that was an original track by the witch. Mm. So I thought they did a cover of some other song. But then after researching, no, it's their song. That's but, but somebody's managing it and they've, they've put it yeah. in that episode because it sounds like an 80s disco song. Maybe Shalomar was too expensive for that episode. Or whatever. <laughs> hey, there's this song. You know, so like, was it a cover or remix or anything? It's it's an original, song. original song. Dun, 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 wow. Dun, dun, okay. You just play on ZNBC. That's if you watch the video, you know. So like that, I'm like, whoa, whoever is part of the, the family of, you know, the guys from the witch band, Jaggery mm -hmm. or whoever, mm -hmm. somebody... Has has managed to to do that thing mm. with and that's the only yeah. song that I know no, of which yeah. which has a life like that mm. from Zambia and I'm not mm. sure which system it had to fall into to in order for that. that to happen but it definitely wasn't Zambia yeah that's what I'm thinking yeah, yeah. yeah. That's <laughs> the, no that's the unfortunate part right and and that's exactly what I'm saying is that a lot of times these one off successes are byproducts of people tapping into other ecosystems right. for because we unfortunately don't have uh, oh. yeah a local one so well you know what and mm. i don't i don't want to plug other people's organizations i don't work for them <laughs> but you mentioned samro earlier right samro is the southern african music rights organization mm. so they are they they mandate stretches beyond south africa's south borders africa. you know and when you find that situation you're describing happening where a song has found its way into like a movie or something. Mm. I also saw something similar more recently. There's a, a show called Morbius. Mm. I think it's on Netflix. So it. Morbius, beautiful. Mm. I think it's, it's starring track. Jared Leto. I uh, think it is. Movie, yeah. Great, man. Mm. And the guy who's who's playing like, you know, 
the the bad guy, you know, there's a time when he's get he's gotten his health back. Well, maybe this is a spoiler for those who haven't watched it. <laughs> that guy gets his health back, <laughs> and then he's doing this dance in the mirror, and there's this music playing in the background, and I heard it going vula vala vula vala. Vula. And I yes, was like, yes, yes, yes. Yeah, I saw that apart. Isn't this in Zulu? It's, yes, it's a South African track. Exactly. Yeah, Boom. A, a, it's and a and gong track. Boom. There yeah. was a gong track test. Yeah. So I was then thinking to myself, man. I don't know how many people in South Africa would have known mm. about this joint, this artist, mm. even the the show. But the publisher's job, yeah. whether they're from Samoa or wherever, yeah. Yeah. is to get that song to play for Please. that scene. Exactly. Mm. Why? Because like that Shalama esque kind of song, mm. it is the perfect song for this scene. Mm. Yes. Where it comes from in the world is irrelevant. Yeah. It yeah. can come from the Maori yeah. tribe yeah. in. Yeah. Yeah. You know, yeah. you know, Australia yeah. or yeah. South America, wherever yeah. it, wherever it comes from, is irrelevant. Yeah. Is this the mood that is captured mm. by the scene mm. in the song? Mm. Slot it in. Whose mm. job is it to make sure the song is around the guys making mm. this movie? The publisher's job, mm. yes. not the artist's job. No, no, no. not his hype man. <laughs> not the guy who does the stage lighting. <laughs> mm. Not the radio DJ. No. Yeah. You know, yeah. there's a guy called a publisher. Yeah, and once it's on that show, that thirty seconds. For the next 20, 30 years, mm. every six months, man, mm. yeah. your bank account goes cling, yeah. cling, yeah. Yeah. cling. Why? Every time somebody watches it, because you stream it. there is a publisher ka-ching. who got you on yeah. there. Yeah. And even when you pass yeah. away, you yeah. know, I'm in black now because one of my compadres passed away. But even yeah. when you pass away, cling every six months, cling your kids, mm. cling every six months, their kids, cling every yeah. six months. Same song from like the 80s, yeah. 70s, 50s, 40s, the 20s. Thing, or maybe the 20s might be some things have a 50 year thing but the point <laughs> is yeah yeah that guy mm. is part of a system yes mm. that exists that isn't recognized as valuable mm. so most countries won't even have that system in place because they'll yeah. think mm. no how are we going to make money mm. bro mm. Can, and that's why it's important to mm. actually you know, to your point to have uh you know certain connections with um, you know these production companies or production houses that make movies uh um uh, Typically, they're called uh, music engineers or music directors mm. uh, to come up with a score or a soundtrack mm. or a movie. Mm. Uh, because I worked with a couple, like with one of the current series, one of the big series in SA uh, called The Wife. Mm. Uh, mm. I worked on that. I think episode one and two, you know, we did most of the score there. Mm. And I worked with a musical director. You know, he was an, he's an independent guy, like an agent. Mm. So if you kind of know, you know, those kind of people and, you know, what's coming out, you know, you're able to pitch because we pitch. Yeah. You know, we pitch for ads, we pitch for scores and that kind of thing. So I think it's quite key that uh, that you sort oh, of- Oh, is uh, mic a little weird? Yeah, that, uh, Sorry, you know- this up a little bit? Yeah. That we, we, and again, it's all about understanding who's the player, like you're saying, mm-hmm. who's, who's who, who's, you know, yeah, in the yeah. zoo, like yeah. who, who does yeah. that? Who does this? Who's that? It's, it's, it's a huge ecosystem. And yeah. if you don't understand that, then you obviously won't know exactly how to plug in. Yeah. I've got a thing. If, yeah. if somebody's watching this right now, Zubs actually interviewed the former head of uh, Samro, isn't it? Mm. On, on Key Africans Unlocked. Not Ando. Not Ando Miko. Yes, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So check out Key Africans oh. Unlocked on YouTube and you can see a full interview where he's talking to her. Right. But I've got a story as well regarding, um, um, you know, movies, well, systems that pay out. Mm. In the US, Brian Cranston, you guys know him from Breaking mm. Bad. Before Breaking Bad, he was in, I think it was Wayne's World or something. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so his character in Wayne's World used to whistle. He'd mm. go in, you know, that was his thing. And he'd just go on set, whistle, you know, walk out. Then he says, one time guy from, you know, management or, or you know, some some pocket within the the, the studio mm-hmm. where they were recording the, the series, phones him and says, who's your publisher? So he says, what do you mean? Like, who's your publisher for, for music? Mm. He says, I don't have a publisher. He says, okay, well, get one because each time you whistle in the show, mm. we get a check. <laughs> wow. <laughs> and he's like, what? So, so he says, uh, yeah, the, he registered now as a musician, you know, yeah. and each time he'd whistle, he says the money that would come in, he'd use it to spoil the guys on set, like drinks or whatever. You know? That's beautiful. So yeah, it just shows you like when the system it is works, organized, yeah. how you know, even even stuff that seems mundane can can mm. get paid for. Yeah, I wanted to ask one thing. You you mm. wanted to speak about brands mm. and brand alignment, brand affiliation. The reality is that <laughs> sometimes you need to spend a little bit of money to get more money. Mm. Sometimes you need to find some kind of money to jump off of. But there's a gap that can be breached. Uh, breached. There's a gap that can be bridged mm. between where you are and where you're trying to get. And there are places that have those resources. Corporate brands. Mm. There are some in Z, there are some everywhere. Mm. 
Mm. How do we align artists with corporate brand access so we can at least bridge that gap? Is that even possible? I know Chanda has even started businesses. <laughs> He's in the business of funding businesses at this point as well. How does how does that happen in terms of accessing resources? Look, uh, there's always going to be an appetite for brands to collaborate with artists. Mm -hmm. And there's only one reason for that. They want to tap into the artist's fan base, right? So they can obviously sell the product and communicate whatever they want to do and and whatnot. So that's the main interest. So I think, firstly, you know, where I I see a lot of artists coming short is... uh, you know, you don't do your homework. So you want to just say, look, I need a brand uh, partner or, uh, you know, I need a brand to endorse or whatever. Mm-hmm. But you have, you don't actually understand that you need to align your brand persona with the brand's uh, objectives. Mm-hmm. Okay, so once you do that and you do your research and you understand where the alignment is and the natural fit is, because remember, every collaboration has to be authentic. Yeah. Because fans see through that. Absolutely. They see through the fakeness, you know what I mean? So they'll, you know, for I'll, I'll just give a maybe a rapid example to say look, uh, you know, you know, you post something about a brand and you endorse a brand and then um uh you know, one of your fans responds on social media like on Instagram and says, "Wow, Chanda, damn, you secured the bag." <laughs> <laughs> Sounds good, right? <laughs> yeah, but that's not what the brand wants. But it's, it's good. It's great. I mean, obviously you're aspiring, you know, you're an inspiration to them. They want to be like you at some point and they're happy for you because probably they've seen you, you know, coming up through the struggle and hustling and getting to where you are. But at the same time, you obviously got to give back to the brand. You know, it's all about ROI. So, you know, you got to work out a way of, you know, you know, doing you know bits and pieces that align just specifically with the brand. Once you do that, at the end of the day, you're going to get comments from your fans like, Wow. You bank with them, I also want to bank with them. You know what mm. I mean? As opposed to you've secured the bag. It makes more sense for the brand because mm. the brand isn't, isn't interested in, you know, you securing the bag. <laughs> They're interested no. in your fans' reaction and engagement towards, obviously, the content that you're putting out there. So, yeah, I, th- I think it's about, you know, branding yourself. Just, mm. you know, understanding exactly where you want to be, who you want to align with, you know, what products, you know, you use. Uh, and also just throwing in subtle, you know, um, hints you, through your engagement with your fans or your social media posts. And automatically you're going to get brands coming to you and just mm. knocking on your door. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Simple, yeah. It's, it's, you you got to be real, you know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. So simple. So I'm going to give like a little bit of an alternate perspective on that one. I think... Mm. I think that's uh, those are very valid comments. Mm. I think that in Zambia, I don't know that we're at the life cycle of where the different practitioners in the value chain see it the way uh, Henry has outlined. Because I think, I think that's an ideal scenario. And I think that that's how it works in a developed market like SA, for example. In Zambia, though, I, 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 you can you just have to look at some of the campaigns. You'd be like, how did they even pick this person? <laughs> like, 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 seriously, like, I, I, don't, like, I don't even need to like, get into this. Yeah, yeah because, because I think it's because... Brand fit. Yeah, because I think that whoever is sitting on that side of the table is still in kind of phase one of logic and reasoning and thinking. Maybe, <laughs> no, 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 I, I just mean like, every, no, markets have life right. cycles. Yeah. Mar- markets yeah. have yeah. life cycles, yeah. right? Yeah. So yeah. when you start, you're like, we need reach. Just get, who's the, who's the guy with 10 million on Facebook? Get him. You yeah. know, that, that, that's what they're thinking, right? Yeah. But yeah. then they're like, oh, actually, we're an alcohol brand. This guy doesn't actually drink. You know, and they figure that out. They've already cut the check, right? Yeah. Yeah. And this has happened. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, so I think that's that... So no, 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 so, you know, so I think that it is, so there's some ways to go in terms of all the people around the table kind of saying, okay, well, you know, what are we trying to achieve? What's the biggest value add? You know, reach is not the only metric. There's also like other qualitative things. Yeah, you know, I think that, yeah. I think that that's how it works in a, in a, De- so, yeah. <laughs> develop. Yeah. And, and to your point, I mean, developed countries, are, I think SA included, mm-hmm. you know, there's tools in place already where mm-hmm. you can actually go into yeah. a profile, I can go to China's mm-hmm. profile and I'll pick up, you know, his fan base, yeah. geographically, the demographics, you know, what brands they consume, mm-hmm. you know, what, where they eat from, where they shop from. Mm-hmm. And using that data, I'm able to create a sort of an alignment or a fit or uh, a pitch mm-hmm. that aligns, you know, Chanda to a particular brand. Ah, but, X. but Henry, those, peop- those tools exist in Zed. People have Instagram in Zed. They can well, access the, the, the artist Instagram. Why don't they do that? Yeah, but Instagram won't give you those kind of uh, da- that kind of data, the deep dive, where you actually know exactly you you actually pull out a fan 
and know where the fan lives, know where the fan shops, know where the fan That's eats, true. know where the fan, how the fan travels, know where the fan goes to shows, know what the fan is listening to. That you can pick up on Insta. But there's a lot of data out there that you know, we use That's to obviously true. analyze. That and, sounds uh, scary. <laughs> yeah, 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 big brother. Hundred percent, hundred percent. So, no, I think, I I think to your yeah. point, yeah. I mean, gender. I mean, obviously, yeah. It's in an ideal world, especially mm. for Zambia. Mm. You know, uh, there's definitely going to be a system in place. There's nothing at the moment. I mean, uh, I've you know engaged with a lot of Zambian artists that come to me, and we you know we go through you know the profiles and whatnot, and they've got no idea. Mm. You know, mm. they don't even know how to engage mm. effectively because i think social media is also one very very key uh tool for obviously promoting your brand as, as an artist definitely okay you, that's uh, it's a no-brainer we all know that you know we've got all the dsps we've got mm. your instas your tiktoks you know uh your facebook your, whatever it may mm. be you know mm -hmm. but it's how you obviously frame uh your the engagement mm -hmm. and uh, your comms with your fans mm. that attracts the brands because mm. it becomes authentic. It must mm. be seen as a paid for collaboration, mm. but it must be a natural and organic sort of kind of, you know, yeah. uh, you know, Alignment. engagement. Yeah, exactly. Mm. So it's just uh, how you frame yourself. And I think that's where the education part that I spoke about earlier comes in. I think we need to get to a point where we need to sort of, I don't know if it's a conference or whatever the case mm. may be, and just, you know, sit down with artists and, you know, bring in, you know, people and just chat about, mm. you know, self awareness around your brand mm. as an artist mm. yeah so chanda makes it seem like there isn't even an appetite to find these tools and use them i mean do you feel like that's the case like you you speak of it as if as if in Z, there isn't even like a reason to have to do that as long as you can just get it done <laughs> You know, as long, because you, that is, as, that long is, as you can get booked at a, a festival, hey man, then you're good. Have we done it? Yes, tick, let's go. <laughs> and I think that is the same attitude across the continent, if I'm being honest. Mm. Most people don't want to do it right. They want to just get it done. Mm. So sometimes it's like, what are we selling? We're selling water. Okay, mm. who's the hottest artist this one? Call them. Are they available? Yes. How much do they want? 50,000. Yes. Done. Let's move yeah. on. And it's done. Mm. And it, the availability of the tools, I'm sure, is 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 democratized. Like anyone can get the tools, right? Mm -hmm. If you can pay for them, which they can yeah, exactly. obviously afford to pay mm -hmm. for them. Mm -hmm. The expertise on how to use the tools, even if they're not there, train them. Mm -hmm. I find now that the younger generation, these Gen Z cats, they can learn anything like this. As long as it's a computer-based, software-based program, mm -hmm. they got it. Just get a bunch of young cats, tell them this is what we're using to get the data, store the data, analyze the data, learn it. Mm -hmm. We're going to need it for our artists, yeah. you know, for our artists, sort of champions, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Our influence of champions, all this, we're going to need this type of knowledge. You're going to be our guy. I don't see why that's a tough thing for folks to do, you know, even in Zed. Exactly. And, you know, back in the day, I think when I, when I started sponsorships, like some many years ago, when I went to sponsorships, there was always that, uh, you know, common phrase within the industry called the chairman's choice, where, you know, if uh, the CEO loves golf, then... Mm -hmm. You gotta have to sponsor a golf tournament. Mm -hmm. you know? If you love soccer, mm -hmm. and if, if you love whatever big, I don't, don't want to name uh, soccer clubs, obviously. Mm -hmm. If he loves whatever soccer clubs he loves, you gotta sponsor it. You know, it's like a direct. You know, like just get them. We need them here because he loves soccer. Mm -hmm. Those days are gone. You know, what I mean, yeah. You, yeah. Do, you don't just put branding up there. You know, you don't just become a poster boy anymore. Mm -hmm. You know, there's more. You know detail that's required there's more engagement yeah. there's more you know uh um you know activations that you you, you, gotta, you gotta put you gotta put in the work let me just put it that way yeah. you're taking me back 20 years uh, i used to work at an advertising agency yeah and because the big boss from our client side uh, was a big rugby fan that was all it was you mm. go into meetings yeah. and we'd just be talking about how mm. the sponsorship for rugby is the meeting would start mm -hmm. um 20 minutes into it, he'd go outside, start smoking and start talking about the, the game last week yeah. and the game previous week, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and that, that's what it was all about. Now, okay, we, we you know, obviously um, we might start winding up, but I want to find out something right now regarding decision making, because mm. we're in a space now where in Zambia, some of the guys that are in positions in government Mm -hmm. Our guys were artists that we, you know, we chop it up with, and now they've been appointed in those spaces. Yeah. I'm not mentioning names, but you know, course, these, yeah. these are good people. And I've seen, like, you know, on Instagram, they're off to Kenya. They're mm -hmm. doing a knowledge exchange. They're off to wherever. Mm -hmm. So they've got good intentions, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Um, 
but then what 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 do we speak to those guys because you know maybe some of the decisions that they make could impact and bring some of these things to life you know mm-hmm. um i don't know if you guys have any thoughts you know i mean i don't know i i i haven't had the opportunity to to have any one on ones or sit downs with the decision makers i guess in this instance so so i don't know i don't know what they're thinking but but yeah I, just like you i've been a third party consumer of some of the um i guess of the what seemed to be attempts at exchange and information gathering and the like so i guess we hope for the best but um yeah i don't know it's it's, it's tricky to say because i think you know culturally you know going back to maybe more discussion i think around the the brand and corporate side of things because with the po- the political side of things is that's a, a lot more that's a different conversation which i'm not so well equipped to to address but i think on the corporate side of things i think one of the things is we the, the i think from a corporate brand perspective i think that the perception of artists as a valuable tool to propagate a branding message has not yet like f- blossomed right i think that when whatever major brand from the us says hey we want beyonce to do this they have a, they perceive beyonce's value and and they and obviously every corporation because they're 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 profit making institutions are doing some form of cost benefit analysis right where they say okay we could put 20 million here or 20 million here with Beyonce and we believe we're going to get XYZ if we get if we do it with Beyonce so net net is a positive for us so let's hire Beyonce right now i think that that kind of cost benefit analysis for whatever reason in the perception of the local corporates in Zambia they always will pick something else right they feel like oh let's just you don't you don't really need an artist just like do a radio ad <laughs> it's like oh just you know, do a tv ad it's a voice yeah, like, guy people don't really care yeah. <laughs> <laughs> people don't really care it was, you know i just think that 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 that, that needle hasn't moved for them yet where they yeah. where they associate a lot of value with using the artist to propagate brand messages so i think mm-hmm. that's one of the things um because it's an incentive structure thing right like things start happening when people have the incentive to do it <laughs> mm-hmm. but obviously yeah. like you're saying you're talking about the tools the reason they don't look for the tools is because in their mind there's no value in them the value, going yeah. down that you know they're like why should i start doing plus spend all this time analyzing things yeah. which are not valuable anyway like, so, that's there's like the zambians they don't care just just put it to your radio ad yeah just, <laughs> <laughs> and make sure it plays just like, you know, before the news as long as it plays before the news huh? the thing will sell why we, we don't need <laughs> you know what i mean you want to buy, yeah. to buy yeah. program yeah. data no. yes. that's how, I, how much mean. just tell me and i'll do it but yeah i mean to that point i think also to chad's point you know <laughs> and that's why we, we we're seeing a shift now uh locally uh in SA where you know you know artists or influencers if you want to call them that or ambassadors mm-hmm. uh, are looking for an equity sort of mm. partnership mm. not just being a poster boy or the face of the brand mm. so you know it's not just about hey you got to post five uh you know uh, uh, instas or stories or whatever you got to do two reels or what not yeah. it's more about okay cool you an arco or brand you want to partner with me how do i get a share mm. of the revenue mm. from mm. that product you know yeah. can i get 20% or can i get 10% or can i get even 5% of a certain volume that i'm going to push for that particular brand as opposed to getting a fee of uh, you know a one soft endorsement mm. because it makes more sense and value for them because now they're putting an actual check in the pocket mm. which is long term yeah. so we're seeing that shift happening and i think again it's a mindset thing and it's it's just how you need to structure your thinking and how you need to you know look at the deals and understand contracts and agreements and uh, you'll be able to you know yeah. figure it out mm-hmm. and just say look this is what i want and there's there's lots of artists and influencers that you know or ambassadors that turn down deals mm-hmm. because yeah. they're yeah. like okay you're gonna pay me 500k once off for six months nah rather give me 20 mm-hmm. percent of the sales of that yeah. brand yeah that I'm going to sell. You can actually measure that within yeah. the period from when you signed me up until the, the end of the term yeah. and then, you know, we work that out. Yeah. And that makes no sense. Here before. So the yeah. point that you're about to make, yeah. I'm just going to muddy it because I was going to throw this towards you. <laughs> the one guy that mastered what you've just said there is the guy who just left us, aka. Mm. Correct. I saw him at the Lurie Awards. He had a presentation which was I think 40 minutes long. Mm. PowerPoint slides, mm. well rehearsed mm. presentation. I was like, "Whoa." Mm. And he understood that because I think he had equity in the alcohol uh, brands that he was pushing, yeah, yeah. even involved in the ideation and that mm. kind of thing. Mm. You're you're dressed in black because uh, of homie, you know, passing on. But yeah, just your your thoughts around around 
you know. I w- yeah, I was going to say, I mean, both Chanda and Henry, both of them have beautiful points because understanding how things work and being able to make them work for you as an artist is is amazing. I mean, that's amazing wisdom that's being dropped there. But Chanda's word as well about seeing that it's about demonstrating value, mm. you know, because... I mean, you talk about the homie, right? I mean, that, that value was easily demonstrable across the continent. I mean, that guy makes it clear that partnering with him is why would he want to pick you, right? I mean, his value is clear. So how do you demonstrate that value as an artist? How do you, mm. how do you show that you are worth more than just, you know, a conversation of a once-off payment, you know? Mm. How, you, how do you demonstrate as an artist that you are worth sitting at a table with, and coming up with terms that are favorable for both sides. Because every artist will just come there with one thing on their, <laughs> on their checklist. Am I getting paid? That's the only thing on the check. How much am I getting paid? Am I getting paid? In fact, how much might be after am I getting paid? Yeah. Am I getting paid? Yes. Okay, let's have a meeting. Hmm. How much am I getting paid? Number. But like, if you know your value, getting paid is almost like five or so six on the list. Yeah. You're going to start the conversation with, okay, who are you? Mm. Do our values align? Yeah, man, okay. Yeah. What have you done in the space that I'm interested in? Yeah. How can we go further in what I'm doing and yeah, what, what you're, you're doing? doing yeah. Okay. Now let's talk terms. Let's talk yeah. expectations. Let's talk goals and targets. Yeah. And then we can talk money. About you money know? Yeah. But all this demonstrating yeah. value in a space like art and music Ooh. on a continent where you know, you're laughed at when you say you want to become an artist. Mm. You know, mm. you're told to forget about being able to afford your own home mm. if you even suggest wanting to be a musician, you know. Like you can't demonstrate value just on being good mm-hmm. at what you do. Mm-hmm. You're going to have to do more than be good, man. Yeah. You're gonna you got to have, have that to business start. acumen. You got to, you know, definitely, you know, have pride as an artist. You know, mm-hmm. you got to think, and like I said, back to my point earlier, you got to do some research. Like you're saying, you just dig Dig into the brands, dig into what you want to achieve. You know, don't just go for the easy check. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Just just avoid that. Yeah. Analyze, sit down and think about it. Even when you get approached by a brand, sit down and analyze. Don't just look at the numbers. Mm-hmm. Sit down and analyze and check, flip. Okay, where are these guys? Are they on the JSE? Or, or how much are they making? What's their annual turnover? You know, not just get a bit... Yeah. If you can't do that, find somebody who can help you do that. But yeah. just understand the brand that you're trying to engage with. Mm-hmm. And uh, that's, that's you know, you want to collaborate with. Because at the end of the day, you know, <laughs> you're just short-selling yourself. You are. We, 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 we always try to avoid that for artists. Yeah. Yeah. And in terms of short-selling yourself, short-changing, yeah. it's more, you know, it's more dangerous for an artist to short-change themselves. And I'll tell you why. I've discovered that as a musician, right? And mm-hmm. over decades, I've been creating music. The music takes a life of its own Mm. and it influences people in its own way, right? Mm -hmm. You just brought the music out here and you introduced it to the world. When you shortchange yourself, Mm -hmm. the thing that that music was supposed to do doesn't now get done. Mm. Because you are so low (laughs) self-esteem, so low hanging, I just want the low hanging, I don't have ambition. Now because of you, what you could have put out to change the world is not going to come out. Mm. You know, so as an artist, you owe it to yourself, yeah. the starters, to want more, want better. So think about what you're doing, plan it, like you say, research. But for the rest of us, man, who are going to consume your art, who are going to be inspired by your music, who are going to, you know, fall mm. in love to the soundtrack to your music, mm. you know, mm. get married, walk up to the altar with your music playing in the background, special moments in our memories. Mm. Mm. You owe it even to us to just, you know. Work on that value on yourself. Build yeah. yourself up, you know. Exactly. Empower yourself with information and be better at what you do. You mm. know? Absolutely. Um, and as African artists, globally, I think we have so much more to offer than anywhere else right now. I yeah. think there's just too much root energy that is tied still in the ground and hasn't been released for us to keep going in the in the trajectory we're going. Yeah. 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 You're going to get the last word. Yeah. Because uh-huh. you, you, we, we here because of your rants. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, your videos. Your videos yeah. Thanks. I appreciate that. No, it means a lot. I guess it's just me getting things off my chest. But, but I guess the final thing I'll say, and maybe this is somewhat contrarian in a way, but I think, you know, some of the problems that we experience, and, and, and I always, always try and say things for a younger version of me or for the young person that might be, you know, watching out there that's trying to figure out how to place themselves. I guess maybe the overarching comments that I'll make is, you know, I think sometimes, one, I mean, especially if you're in Zambia, I generally think we have a kind of cottage industry approach to doing things. That's where, where some of this comes from, right? Is that, you know, between the your your relatives telling you that music is not a serious profession and like, 
you know, like, ah, these guys, they, you know, the, there's no money in this. You, you kind of, you start to like reprogram your approach to it, uh, to be commensurate with that, right? You're like, oh, well, this is not even a serious thing. So I'm not going to be as serious as I might be if I were an accountant or whatever, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So when I'd say, you know, try and avoid that, if you can, like, don't, don't be discouraged by all the things that people might say about what 100%. music is, is, is not, you know, just go in there and be as professional as you can be, you know, mm -hmm. you know, whether it's like you're saying presentations, I've done this so many times. I'm even tired of the amount of <laughs> proposals and presentations I've put together. Just to be told, Oh no, come next year. You know, <laughs> you, you gotta, you gotta go, you gotta go through it. But you know, but uh, so that would be my thing is that don't be discouraged as a young person. I also think in a way, and I, I could, this could be somewhat contrarian, but I also kind of feel like social media kind of tricks the young musician into thinking that a career in music is much more easily accessible than it actually is because mm -hmm. i think social media gives you this idea that it's like this diy thing that you do you post something on tiktok all of a sudden you're you're a you're a musician you know what i mean yeah. um and while i guess that is i guess has been true for some people i think the kind of more i guess uh planned slow approach is saying okay you know, this is a, uh, this is what I've done this with this first single. So I need two, three people to help me do this on the next single. Mm -hmm. And that kind of like slow progression thing, which is team based and is not so much this like DIY play the lotto and hope for the best. Mm -hmm. I think that that mentality is also not very like, uh, um, beneficial for the young person because the, the and, I, and, and I think, I don't know who's interested <laughs> it's in for this, but I feel like we're always sold or kids are sold this idea of music, the music business as the lottery. Like it's always like, Oh, get a hit. And all of a sudden your life yeah. is, you know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. But I, I, I would like, I would recommend against that way of viewing things. You know, I think building a brand as an artist, you know, and I think you had touched on this, it's a capital intensive exercise. You know, mm. I know I, I funded all myself, you know, mm. uh, capital intensive, labor intensive. Mm. So you got to be ready and willing to walk the long haul. And if you have capacity constraints in certain areas, you need to identify partners that can help you walk that path so yeah, uh -huh. so i think just taking that way of thinking like no it's not a cottage industry don't listen to what your auntie's yeah. telling you that no it's like nothing serious be serious you know mm -hmm. if you gotta do the powerpoint presentation role. do it yeah. you know yeah. what i'm saying yeah. you gotta do research the jsc mm -hmm. and stuff do it you know what i mean yeah. also it's not uh social media post something and your life will you know <laughs> that, <laughs> it's yeah. kind of like so think plan strategize this year next year yeah. the partnerships with this and such and such a person i invest this much of my own i need i have a shortfall of this where can i get this from that's that's more the mindset that i think is is the is the sustainable way to success as opposed to i think how it's often sold so yeah i've got one question though okay. I mean, i'm gonna pose it to you guys the creatives the artists right yeah what's the zambian strategy of local to global hmm yeah, I saw, I, saw, I, saw, I saw Chanda actually do one of his rants about that, about yeah. why are Zambian arts, you know, artists not blowing up overseas, etc. Yeah. you know? Yeah. Um, I'm going to let them answer this. this mm. nah, Zambia no, no, experts. No, no, no. <laughs> I don't think there's a strategy. No, 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 no. I think there's, I wouldn't say there's a collective strategy. I think each individual doing, yeah, has ideas of how they're going to get there. You know, oh, like yeah. when you look at a lot of bios, even from 20 years ago, uh, Zambian artists would be on a Grammy, hmm. uh, you know, in my ambition. But then, what steps, you know, are you getting the education and how are you going to get, get there? Grammy, you know what I mean? Yeah. Are you, yeah. so, so I, I think it's each individual uh, person trying to carve out their thing. Yeah. Uh, recently we, we had uh, a dinner with Pompey and, and Esther and, and I was asking him like, but how come you're big in East Africa where they mm. don't get the language, mm. <laughs> you know, but, but you're huge there. Mm. And he, you know, he gave a like very dope explanation and, and it was also linked to the, the genre, like the reggae and how big it is there and so on. And I realized like, flip, back when we were growing up, the biggest genre in, in Zambia was rumba. Mm. From the DRC, we, we didn't understand. Yeah, 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 exactly. Franco, Franco, we didn't understand Ingala, we didn't understand yeah. French, but you know, that General was huge. Duval. I mean, even now, <laughs> <laughs> even now, my piano yeah. is like big in Europe. You right? know what I mean? They don't they understand too. Yeah, yeah, they still the vibe and out there. So, so I think we're all experimenting and we're all thinking about mm. these things like mm. what path is going to get us there? Because if you can make a huge success in another region where they don't understand your language, yeah. then is it to do with the musicality? Is it to do, you know, so. I don't know what the answer is, uh, if uh, you know, apart from local to global. But I think each individual artist is trying to figure out how they fit in that. You know, yeah. Chef Chef was on the chat um, mm -hmm. a couple of weeks ago, and 
he's just got like I was I was thinking about it because you know the chat went extensive about Nalam Pampamina. Um mm, mm. and it hit me that if you like beats, mm. and this hit me when there's a guy called Joe Troy, he responded to a tweet um re- when he saw that clip of Zubs and Obita bugging out his song. Oh yeah. And he said, What the F hellfire and brimstone <laughs> is this? You know, fire emojis. Mm. And I realized like that guy doesn't understand Bimba, but Chef's voice on that track is percussion. Yep. If you like an instrumental mm. and you like a hard hitting instrumental and this guy is coming, you don't understand what he's saying, but he's part of the percussion, he's part of the fabric and it's 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 touching you on a level, you know what I mean? Because yeah. I didn't think hip hop in a local language can yeah. resonate with somebody from outside Zambia mm. <laughs> until I saw that, you know, until That's I saw... Wild. The thing, and I'm trying to understand it. So I don't know what the answer is. Oh, yeah. <laughs> in short, look, look. I think each person is trying to figure themselves out. If, if you listen to Chandan Bao's uh, tracks, I mean his, his records, and those are like international, to, yeah, yeah, and his videos as well, yeah. dope stuff. I mean that's like international appeal and whatnot. Mm. You know, uh, I'm, I'm look. I'm not too sure how you know how the crossover looks like, mm. uh, you know, uh, analytically, but mm. I think it's dope stuff. And you know, big ups to that. Um, but I think there's also opportunities in there. I mean, you've you've got this uh, sort of aesthetic around your videos where you have this location kind of, yeah. you know, uh, you know, exposure, mm, you know, you, mm. you, like a track you did. Uh, I think it is, is it okay? Okay. Mm. Is it okay, yeah? okay is a tough track. Tough man. track. You did, the video you did, is tough. You did too. Vic Falls and uh, you did uh, Lick Tanganyika. And uh, for me, I think, you know, those opportunities, even from a brand perspective, because that could be location placement. Yeah. So you need to get people like, uh, you know, the Zambian Tourism Board. But he did that. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. yeah, you did. Didn't you do a thing and yeah. the Tourism Board was yeah. involved yeah. in your yeah. launch yeah. with a different yeah. video? Yeah, yeah. Okay. every time. It's every time. Every time. And, 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 that's the one he's talking so about. Oh, that's what I'm talking about. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, they they broke your check to do to do that? No, 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 no. I didn't secure the bag. But you did a power. I think my point is just in summary, obviously from our side is that, you know, there's plenty of opportunities out there for artists, yeah, <laughs> not yeah. just from uh, re- the recorded, uh, you know, projects or records and, and work, but just from, you know, different uh, little yeah. subtle, you know, activations. Yeah. But salute mm. the legwork, yeah. man. Yeah. Because if, if, the, if, and we're having this conversation as we're coming here, uh, Zabs and I, the fact that if you're constantly working, you know, it, it it pays off, but you have to be in motion. You have to be uh, in the slipstream of making things happen, knocking yeah. on doors and stuff. Mm. And, and I think that's what that speaks to. The fact that, you know, I, I saw that thing, I yeah. thought like, they're doing a press conference, mm. you know, because I, I got a mm. notification, mm. they're doing a live Facebook press conference mm. with the tourism, whatnot. I thought like, oh, money's exchanged. <laughs> <laughs> but what it Meanwhile, speaks to is I this grind, that, you know what I mean? Yeah. And, and yeah. that speaks to just, you know, motion yeah. and tenacity and a push. 100%. You know? yeah. So, yeah. So, yeah, no, great stuff there. Yeah. 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 I lied when I said you get the last word. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. But have you got, sorry, have you got thoughts? Because, because. Uh, what, local to global? So, yeah, no, yeah. 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 Local to, uh, look, all I'll say is <laughs> why, you know? Why you want to go global? Start there. Mm, right? that's Ask yourself, I think that's that's why, yeah. why do I want to have a global market? You know? Mm, okay. And maybe that can be the beginning. Mm. Second thing I would say is the internet is incredible, man. Mm. The internet gives you access to the planet yeah. by mm. just logging online. I don't know what your Wi-Fi situation is that mm. way you are. I don't know what your <laughs> access and speeds are. And I'm not trying to judge. I'm just letting you know there are strategies built around going global that don't involve you having to move heaven, hell and earth to do a PowerPoint presentation, <laughs> to present to Universal Records at Henry, and then maybe have a budget with a team. Mm. Sometimes mm. you can have access to the globe mm. with a little bit more of, uh, you know, data. Mm. But then it, it all starts with why. <laughs>